explain to you what it is that we are dealing with and why that is causing the trouble that it causes. Uh, what does a typical vestibular, uh, typical vestibular assessment and treatment look like? So when you come to see one of us, what it is that we're going to be doing in terms of the assessment and then what it is that we can do, depending on the, the causative factors even within the system, what will a typical treatment session look like? And he's actually going to show you a few very simple and easy exercises you can actually just start uh, doing at home from today itself and get things a little better. Just easy stuff that we can get, even without knowing what the specific causes of your uh, trouble are. Okay. So, just a brief introduction. Right? The vestibular impairment is an underlying cause in as many as 45% of people complain of disease. So, see, when we say disease, right, it's like an umbrella term for too many things. Right? It could be because of blood pressure issues, it could be because of something in the brain, it could be anything. But vestibular uh, system specific issues are 45% of the TDD causative factors. So, almost half the population that has Disease, balance issues, etc., has some component at least of the vestibular system involved, and that is why it is so important for us to know what it is that we do about it, help things get better. And 80% of people over the age of 65 have experienced disease in some shape or your form, which is obviously a lot of people, right? And why that is so important for us is because that brings about an 8%. That brings about an eight-fold increase in the risk of a fall. And you know, fall is obviously a very well-known risk factor for broken bones, and it can lead to a significant decrease in the quality of life. So that is why for us it is very important that we step in, in the early stages and improve the vestibular function so that we decrease the risk of a fall. Alright, now we get to the really great really most possible, the most common causes of disease, right? So like I mentioned earlier, the cardiovascular system, if you have someone with blood pressure problems, heart attack, fibrillation, anything along those lines which can cause a lot of blood pressure fluctuations can make, uh, make a person very dizzy like headed. You have neurological disorders like multiple sclerosis, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, etc, etc, etc. All of those also have a huge dizziness component involved. So if someone has any of those, that can be a huge causative factor when it comes to uh, dizziness as well. Some medications actually have um, dizziness as a side effect. So a lot of times when you look at the, you know, the tiny little writing which barely know anybody can read, there is dizz uh, dizziness is a risk factor as a side effect for a lot of different, uh, a lot of different people, uh, a lot of different medications have dizziness as a Cardiovascular system is the cardiologist. Where we come into the picture, right? So, where, what condition are we looking at when we talk about the surgery every day? First of all, even though technically it wouldn't be really a physiotherapy day. But you know that there is something wrong. And again, we get a lot of this from pretty much every person we talk to. Is, you know, I become more depressed. I feel anxious all the time. I am irritable, etc, etc, etc. Because when you have some component of dizziness going on in your life at all times, and then everyone tells you, oh, you're fine. Or we did a whole bunch of tests and we found nothing wrong. All of those things can make you more anxious. Just getting a proper assessment and getting it treated properly will help to get everything under control when it comes to the anxiety, depression, etc, etc. Visually induced dizziness. Now when it comes to the visual system, it is, I'm going to get into the balance system a little uh, further down the line. But your vision is a very important component of the balance system. Any uh, dysfunction in the visual system can also lead to dizziness. And there are exercises that we can do and there are interventions that we can do to help improve upon that as well. Vestibular system disorders, which is basically the crux of everything we're talking about here, 
BPPV, which is benign positional paroxysm and vertigo. Always confusing, even though I've been doing this for years now. And other vestibular conditions. So you have vestibular neuritis, something called Meniere's disease, etc., etc. A whole bunch of those uh, conditions as well. But vestibular system disorders are the bulk of the conditions we treat when we're talking about vestibular rehabilitation. Neck dysfunction, that is uh, anything, one of the least understood. And to this day, there is a little bit of controversy about whether cervicogenic dizziness, that is a dizziness originating from the neck, actually is something that should be considered as part of vestibular rehab or not. For our purposes, we do consider it. There are some schools of thought that say there is absolutely no uh, basis for it. So take your pick. As far as I'm concerned, clinically, we've seen that it actually does have an effect on the balance and dizziness as well. So we would uh, treat that uh, as part of vestibular rehab conditions. And head trauma, like someone in an accident or a fall, if you have a whiplash or someone with a concussion, would also be a very good uh, candidate for vestibular rehabilitation just to improve upon the functioning of your system. The Okay. Can that have any, um, can that be a reason why now? Actually, tinnitus is one of the signs and symptoms that we're looking for when you have the similar dysfunction. Which to me basically means that you've had long term vestibular dysfunction. So, tinnitus is one of the symptoms, and now the word is only on the problem. There would have probably been a trigger given the infection or something along those lines. Probably cause the body to come on. So we have a similar dysfunction in the body. The tinnitus usually comes in Vestibular dysfunction is the common sort of link. Tinnitus was one symptom, vertigo is another symptom. Which is, what, which is what basically makes me think you've actually had it for a while, the vestibular dysfunction, and now the vertigo is only coming on because. So, what are the signs and symptoms that we're looking for when you have uh, vestibular dysfunction involved, right? So, actually, we're going to address your question in more detail now. Huh? The most common, of course, is vertigo, right? What is vertigo? When I say vertigo, what's the one thing that comes to mind? For us, clinically, that's it. <laughs> Spinning. <laughs> the key word in the history taking that we do is spin. If you have spinning, you have vertigo. See, vertigo and dizziness, in, in layman terms, are used very easily interchangeably. When we're getting really technical in, in terms of our assessments, if you do not have the spin, you do not have vertigo. Then you have dizziness. When I say spin, you say, oh, the head is, my head is spinning, the room is spinning around me, the pictures on the wall feel like they're all hazy and moving around, that's vertigo. So if you come in with one of those complaints, that's when you have uh, vertigo. That is the most common sign of vestibular dysfunction. Okay, the other signs and symptoms, dizziness, especially with head movements like the lady mentioned. So, you turn to your right, okay, a couple of seconds of feeling a little woozy and then things go back to sort of normal, right? Blurring of vision, again, with head movement. So what happens if you turn very quickly, it takes a couple of seconds for you to be able to focus on whatever it is you want to be looking at. That's also a very uh, a common sign. Neck tightness and stiffness. Now this is not because of the causative factor, no, but if you have dizziness all the time, invariably, very reflexively, we all tend to do this. Like we tense up quite often. And then when you have that happening repeatedly, before you know it, this begins to feel tight. And some people say, oh, my neck also hurts since I've had BPPV. That's because you're constantly tensing up and these muscles are getting really tight. So that's basically what uh, also happens. Imbalance, like a gentleman mentioned here. So when vestibular dysfunction is, uh, is something that you're dealing with, loss of balance is very, very common which you know, goes back to the increase in the fall risk that I mentioned earlier. Headaches, very common as well. 
calls generalized dizziness and feeling foggy so sometimes you know we'll have people come and say I feel like there's a cloud inside my head my first vestibular patient after i got my certification came in with the exact same words so like you know for three years i've been living with a cloud inside my head was the exact same statement that she used is that what you described as foggy yeah mm -hmm. very very common very very common so those are the the most common signs and symptoms that we uh, mm -hmm. that we are dealing with when we talk about the vestibular dysfunction. Right? There's more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's magnetic. This is something that we use to uh, sort of demonstrate to our patients when we're doing an assessment. Is that uh, the picture, is it clear enough? Yeah. So, so when we're dealing with the ear, right, so the vestibular system, where is it located? It's in the inner ear. Anatomically speaking, the ear has three parts. You have the outer ear, which is what we see, right? The middle ear, which is sort of like a vacuum tube. A lot, a lot of it has to do with the hearing and all of those things. And the inner ear is where the vestibular system is located. So when we talk about see, outer, middle, and then this is our area of interest. This to me is like, basically, here's my bill to at this point. So. I'm going to have a little more uh, attention paid to this, right? When we're talking about the vestibular uh, system, structurally speaking, the reason humans see the world in 3D is because we have three eyes. We have the anterior, this, this, point here, this one right here, which is in the front, the posterior, or the interior, down here, which is in the back, and then the horizontal, which is sort of lying like this. When we are doing our history taking, when we are doing our assessment, each one of those presents with a different set of uh, symptoms depending on which canal is involved. So, one will have, when we have the anterior canal, we have people that are more prone to getting nausea. When we have specific, uh, specific movements that will cause the stimulation of the canal. So, when we are asking questions during the assessment, during the history taking itself, a lot of our initial thought process is going towards one canal or the other, depending on what the symptoms are and what movements are, pre uh, are causing the symptoms to present themselves. So each one of those will end up giving us different presentations and then we end up doing specific testing for the presentations that we are talking about as we do the assessment. Like I said, benign positional parallelism and vertigo is 50% of disease. This one says elderly, but even in general, even for the younger population, unless we have someone dealing with head trauma, BPPV is about 50% of the causes of disease, any which ways. And the most uh, typical uh, movements that will cause the symptoms to come on is lying down or getting out of bed. So sometimes people are like, oh yeah, when I'm trying to lie down, the first few seconds after I lie down, I feel like my room is spinning around me. Or when you first get out of bed. First thing that you wake up with in the morning, and you're like, and then you have to sit at the edge of the bed for a minute or two, allow the system time to settle down, and then you can get out of bed and you know, start your day. Looking up or looking down. So if I'm in the shower and I look back to wash my hair, it causes me to feel I'm, I'm like I'm rocking in the boat. And that she's nodding, so it's basically a yes on that one. Or if you have someone trying to bend down and tie their shoelaces, the bending down movement will stimulate the anterior canal, and that feels... So a lot of times that people end up sitting and putting the shoelaces on because they're afraid of falling or just tipping over when they're trying to bend down and tie the shoelaces. The horizontal canal is more the side to side. So if I turn when I'm driving, for example, if I turn to check my blind spot and if I feel like just this whole spin that happens, that's the horizontal canal. So that's just examples of specific movements that we're looking for and the kind of questions you can expect to be asked when you're coming in for the assessment because those are the movements that present that cause the symptoms and that tell us, okay, it might be this, that, or the other canal. So we're getting into the specifics of it even as we are asking the initial questions. And like you mentioned, sir, no adverse findings on medical investigations. CAT scans, MRIs, they, 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 like they'll put you through the whole works and nothing shows up. Which causes a lot of frustration. But then again, you know, it's a good thing because that means everything else is fine. You just need to fix this one little thing and you're okay. Any questions, any concerns about that?
question just occurred to me. If you're wearing hearing aids, yes. can they mess up can you the system of the ear? Potentially, yes. yes. Because it can affect the, uh, the pressure in the inner ear. It can affect that, so yes. Now this is a very interesting uh, part of the vestibular system uh, functioning as well as treatment. It's called the vestibular ocular reflex. This goes back to my uh, earlier statement about the vision and the vestibular system being very closely involved. Now I'm going to get a very slightly technical over here. When we're looking at the, the nervous system, the, the nerve that supplies the vestibular system and the nerve that controls eye function literally lie one on top of the other. So they literally one right here on the other. In terms of the function as well, these two are very, very closely interrelated. For anatomical as well as for functional reasons, we cannot separate vision and vestibular system from one another at all. So if you have a visual problem, your balance and your vestibular system is affected. If you have a vestibular dysfunction, the visual system is affected, which is what causes the blurring as well as the, the lack of focus. Right? What the VOR does is it's going to help us to integrate and coordinate the information that goes from the eyes and the movements going into your brain. Right? So when I'm looking at a particular point, when I'm walking towards a certain point, as I'm walking, my eyes as well as my vestibular system is gathering information with every step I take and is sending it up to the brain. When we have a dysfunction in the VOR, that information gathering and processing is disrupted, which is what causes the lack, the lack of balance, which is what is something that we have to really be very careful with making sure that we are training and retraining and strengthening because unless we can get that fixed, you're not going to get that. So a lot of this becomes part of the exercises that we have you do when you come in for vestibular rehabilitation. Uh, Any panels. questions about that? This is sort of an important concept. So when we're looking at the balance system, right? How many slides are you? This my last one? Um, you have one more slide. So the balance system as a whole in the body, right? has three components, the vestibular system in the inner ear, which I just sort of covered, the eyes and proprioception, which basically is nerve endings in our feet as well as our joints that gathers information all the time. So for example, if I have you stand with your eyes closed in a dark room, you cannot see me. You're relying on your vestibular system and the information that your feet and your joints are gathering through the nerve endings inside which are sending information to your brain at all times. If I were to close your eyes and have you walk from that rubber mat onto the ground, even though you cannot see, you will feel there's a change in the surface and the, the density of the surface because the nerve endings are getting stimulated. Now, all three of these are gathering information all the time and sending it up to the brain. So it's the integration of all the information that goes in from one, two, and three to the brain that allows us to be balanced and to go through life on a daily basis. The issues arise when one of these starts to misbehave. So assuming it's the right inner ear that starts to misbehave. In which case, it's your left inner ear, your eyes, and the proprioception that is the only thing that's left in giving information to the brain and that can cause imbalance because now the, the balance, the even flow of information has been disrupted. One side is not sending the information that it was and all of a sudden your brain is like one second, something is missing. And that something missing becomes a problematic area which is where we come in. Which is where I step out because now it's going to be Kanako who takes over. I'm done with the fun part, the technical stuff. <laughs> I leave to her every time. I do the thank fun you. stuff. So, thank you, Shazad. My name is Kanako. I'm one of the vestibular physiotherapists at uh, Physio Mobility as well. So, now that Shazad has done the technical components, let's talk about what we actually do at our clinic. Okay? So, day one vestibular assessment. So that is usually about an hour. So you come in and we start by listening to your story. 
Okay, as we already heard from you, as well as you, ma'am, okay, everyone has a very different story. Even though you guys all had dizziness that could have lasted for a few days or for months or for years, everyone has a story. And so we, we start by listening to every single thing that you have to say because every detail that we get, it's going to give us a clue about how we can get you to be better. So we start off about when did the dizziness start? How did it start? Did you go through any medical investigations? As Shazan has mentioned, you most likely went to the emergency. You saw various specialists. You, saw, you talked to many different doctors without many answers. We're also going to ask you about any aggravating factors. So what makes you feel dizzy? So a lot of the times, as Shudad has mentioned, it's when you move your head in different directions, or if when you're moving, you feel a little bit unbalanced and you may start feeling dizzy as well. But usually, it's something related to the movement of your head. Okay? We've also heard many times that, especially for people who's had dizziness for many years, they tell me, I avoid certain movements now. I avoid reaching down to pick something up. I avoid putting my head down to pick something up because I don't, I, I don't want to feel dizzy. I've stopped cooking because I'm so scared of falling forward to, uh, and into the fire. I've stopped exercising. I, I've stopped doing all these sports. Everyone has a different story and we are here to help. Okay? And I'm going to tell you later on that this avoidance behavior the fact that you're trying to avoid the dizziness is actually going to make you feel worse. And it's actually going to make you feel more dizzy, weaker, and more imbalanced. So I'm going to talk to you more about that later. Okay. Next, we do a general mobility screening. As Shazad has mentioned earlier, okay, people who have dizziness, we tighten up because we feel like we're walking on ice. Okay, so a lot of people will complain that they have a lot of neck stiffness. Okay, it's so hard to move, move their neck or it's always so achy. That could actually be related from dizziness. I've had a client who, um, who came to me uh, just for neck stiffness, but then later I, as I asked her more questions, she actually has dizziness issue as well. So by treating, so I actually decided to treat her dizziness instead of just doing manual therapy for her neck and her neck actually felt a lot looser. Okay? I didn't touch her neck. It was more, I got her to feel more balance on her feet so that her body can finally relax when they're walking. Alternatively, as Shazan had mentioned, it's not, this is not the focus of, the, of this presentation, but neck stiffness can actually cause dizziness as well. So this is applicable for, uh, for people who sit a, a long time at the office. Okay, really long time and they're in a really bad posture. So we always screen for the neck especially, but for the rest of the body as well. We do balance testing. This might be applicable, uh, this is applicable for everyone, but especially for elderly who might be at a falls risk. So we get you uh, placing your feet in a different position. We may be getting you to do some different activities while you're, uh, while you're in a challenge position and see how you react. Next. We do functional walking testing. So what that means is first, we'll get you to walk down the hallway while your head is facing straight. Okay, we're just, I'm just gonna watch you walk. A lot of the times people with uh, balance deficits or dizziness, you're gonna be looking down, okay? As we said, your balance system has different parts, but people with inner ear dysfunction, you tend to use your eyes a lot more. Your eyes become the dominant component of your balance, so you tend to look down. Okay? Some people who've had chronic dizziness and balance, they have learned to look forward. Okay, great. Now I'm going to ask you to walk as you move your head. You're going to look around the room. Okay, you're going to look at the flag. You're going to look at him. Okay. And sometimes, or a lot of the times, actually, sorry, people who has uh, vestibular condition. They tend to wobble a little bit more as soon as they walk and their head starts moving. Okay, so this is something that we do. Vestibular ocular motor screening. So that sounds like a very big word, 
But essentially what that means is, as we can see in figure two, that's some of the tests that we do. But essentially what we do is we look at the relationship between your ears and your eyes. As she said, as mentioned, there is a very intricate relationship. Okay, for example, as she said, mentioned, as your head keeps moving, but I want to keep looking at my thumb, are my eyes able to keep still on the target, even though my head is moving? A lot of the times, people with this uh, vestibular condition, especially when they start moving their head quickly, their eyes tend to wander off, okay? That is one of the signs that we look for for vestibular condition, okay? Last thing is the positional testing for BPPB, okay? As we said, BPPB is one of the most common causes of dizziness um, as a result of inner ear dysfunction. Okay, so having said that, BPPB, I want to emphasize this, it's such a treatable condition. It's so, so effective that we can help. Okay, and essentially what BPPB is, as Shazad has mentioned, okay, little rocks, they usually sit right in the center here, okay? That's where the calcium crystals are supposed to sit. But sometimes it just gets dislodged in one of these three canals. Every time the crystals move in here now in the canals, you start getting the vertical sensation. So what we do during the assessment is, as seen in figure one, we put your head in a specific position. There's different uh, positions for each canal, but we put you in a specific position to see if the crystals are gonna start dropping. As soon as the crystals start dropping, the your, your vertical sensation is going to happen. And that's a positive test for BPPD. And that we can do something about. So has anyone been diagnosed with BPPD here? No. You. I remember you said that you have vertical when you roll. When you turn to the right. But how about in bed? Okay, so lying down in the slowly. Yeah. I go very slowly, but I, I, I rest my head down. He was not my opportunity. I have to, and now today, How long have you had that? Uh, I recently flipped on and off during the last 10 years. 10 years. So, okay. we'll come to the last two years. I think also, uh, just my, uh, sorry. Okay. 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 That's interesting. Circ is one of the most um, common medication for dizziness. It works for some people. It doesn't work for other people. Okay. It does work for you. That is great. Okay. But I don't, I do wonder if you might have some crystals. That's what I've been telling you. Yeah. I can just go so much in my life. This is seven part basis of years. I never have to be moving Why, well. And sometimes it can just sit in there. For like you could have had crystals lying there for over ten years, and I've had people who has had undiagnosed BPPB. They've had crystals for many for many years. For a lot of the times, especially if you've had crystals for a long time inside the canal, it's always moving around. Your brain just decides to ignore it. Your brain just decides to not listen to this in your ear. Yeah, so then you don't feel dizzy, but occasionally those crystals might bother you. So it might be worth checking it out, potentially. Is it, is it a, uh, is it a possibility that some crystals at this point, my left is point, all the time is here? Yep. And is it possible to get some spots and the type of market is possible? It might be a solution by. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Is there any solution to Well, that's a perfect question. <laughs> that's a perfect question because I'm going to get to it right now. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, treatment for BPPP, it's actually very simple, okay? So if there are rocks in one of these three canals, okay, what are we gonna do? So let's say the crystal's in this one, so there's little rocks floating inside, and every time we move around, it's moving. There is a very specific maneuver. So once we determine which canal it is, there is a specific maneuver. Oh, yeah. I'll keep going, okay? <laughs> I'll keep going. So uh, there is different types of maneuvers, okay? So essentially a maneuver is a series of head movements as seen in figure one, where we put your head in a specific place at a, in a specific order. So someone very smart has discovered that if you move those head in a very specific order, if it's a this canal, we're gonna slowly move the head around to drop it back into the center, okay? As you can see, Epley's maneuver is the most common one. Well, that's a lot of doctors will try if they know, if they feel like you have EPPP. This is the most common one, but I'm gonna tell you why this is not gonna work for everyone. Epley's maneuver is going to work for one, out of these three canals, okay, for one year. Okay, it might work for the other year, but for one year, only gonna be working for one of the three canals. And see, okay, look at this. They're all oriented very differently. Okay, people who look intelligent might think, if we move, if we move the head in one certain direction, it's only gonna move the crystals of one of the canals. Because they're all oriented differently, there's different maneuvers for each one. And that's what doctors miss. Okay, and then they go straight to the Epley's maneuver. For your case, I feel like you're in a different canal. The crystals might be lying in a different canal. It's the one that might be facing horizontally. The one, the Epley's maneuver, works for these, this one. Some do the wrong exercise. And then, well, again, we have to do an assessment. Okay, I can guarantee anything. <laughs> Do the crystals ever calcify and stay fixed? Ah, good question. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it gets calcified per se, but there's some there's times where the rocks get stuck in one of the one of the cell the nerve cells inside. Okay. And there is a maneuver to try to get that out. Okay. The maneuver might require a little bit of speed to try to shake it off. Okay, so again, there's so many different maneuvers that we know that doctors might unfortunately know. And BPPP is so frustrating because a lot of people end up in the emergency because they have such severe vertigo. So please, okay, before I get to the next slide, if you have any loved ones or if you yourself, one, one day you wake up in the morning, you get up out of bed and you feel the spinning sensation, Talk to your doctor, but also come see us because in one to three treatment sessions where we do the maneuver, you're going to feel so, so, so much better. Okay, almost like 99% recovery. Other than medications that I take, other than these exercises, is there any minor surgery or something that can be done in your ear to? Take those crystals, put them in the right place forever, whatever, you know? Yeah. No surgery. No. Maneuver works. <laughs> Unfortunately, the inner ear is tiny. Okay, it looks big here, but it, it's deep inside. Okay, some of, my, some of my patients ask me, oh, can you just like laser zap things inside? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Okay, but trust me, one to three sessions. If some people have had that variable sensation on and off because of the crystals floating around, and the maneuver has helped. Symptoms such as vertigo when you get out of bed, get in the bed, rolling in bed, okay, looking down, picking something up and coming up. And if you have that vertigo sensation, make sure they come see us because this is something that we can really, 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 really help. And most people don't know. Okay, but anyways, we're going to talk about the other subset of people. So BPPB, it's pretty quick. One to three sessions, done. Other people, okay, um, other people might be, it might take a little bit longer, but still very treatable. So the other subset of people, they've had an actual injury to the vestibular, um, the vestibular system, so the inner ear, either from infection, viral, um, inflammation, water inside, whatever it might be, there was a physical damage. And unfortunately, 
function in the eight months, we lose those functions in the inner year. We can't we can't even grow the, the nerves. We can't grow the inner year. Once it's lost, it's gone. Just like your hearing. Once once you've lost certain hearing cells, it's gone. Okay? So I'm gonna talk to you about those people who might be one of you guys. Okay. So when you first injure your inner ear, you're going to feel dizzy when moving your head because your inner ear is not really good at detecting the movements anymore. Okay. So what are you going to do? A lot of people will learn very quickly to avoid moving, moving their head. As I mentioned earlier, you're not going to move your head as much. You might just keep your head very, very stiff. Stop exercising. The problem with that is very similar to your muscles. If we work out our muscles, your muscles get stronger. If we stop exercising and if we stop going to the gym, your muscles get weaker. Okay? Very similar to the inner ear. If we stop stimulating the inner ear, which is by moving your head around, we're going to lose that function further. And it's actually going to get more damaged or more, it's going to get weaker than when it first got the injury. So this is the cycle that I like to show people because you might be stuck in this cycle right now. So first, you get dizzy. Once you get dizzy, you're going to avoid movements that make you feel dizzy or even feeling, you're going to avoid movements that make you feel unbalanced. Then, you're going to stop exercising. You're going to stop moving around. Okay? You're not going to go for daily walks anymore. Now, when you end up, your muscles are going to get weaker. You become more deconditioned. You're also going to have a weaker balance system. Your inner ear is not stimulated anymore because you stop moving your head. Now, once you do try to move your head in a certain direction, you're going to feel more dizzy, even more dizzier than before. And now, you're stuck in this vicious cycle Avoiding, but the dizziness keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Where we come in is to get you out of this cycle. Okay? We're going to get you out of this cycle, and I'm going to show you how now. Okay, so this is where the treatment happens. Okay? So it's kind of it's kind of hard to see because I'm just going to explain it here. So the secret. Okay. The secret recipe for getting you out of feeling dizzy is you're actually going to feel more dizzy. You have to feel dizzy to get better. Okay. That's a little uncomfortable for a lot of people. Okay. You've been avoiding for so many years. You've been learning to stiffen everything up. And I'm finally getting you out of the comfort zone. Okay. So vestibular rehabilitation is primarily a progressive exercise-based treatment pro program. It's purely exercises. There's different types. First is vestibular exercises. Okay? Vestibular exercises essentially means we get your head moving. We get your head moving to stimulate your inner ear again, because that's the best way that we know to stimulate this ear. Okay? During these exercises, you're going to feel dizzy, okay? but not overly dizzy to the point that you're, you're, you're going to be dysfunctional for the rest of the day. You're just going to feel a little bit dizzy, which is enough for the brain to process these signals that's coming from the inner ear. And you're going to do that movement over and over and over again with me. Eventually, your brain learns to tolerate that movement. Your brain learns to analyze that information better then you're going to feel less dizzy and you're going to feel more balanced in the long run. We're going to do balance exercises. So we're going to get you putting your feet in different positions. Okay? We're going to use your whole balance system. Remember, your balance system includes your inner ears, your eyes, and the joints of your body. we got to put everything together. So we're going to do very, a lot of different ba uh, balance exercises. Next, we're going to do posture correction exercise. Okay? A lot of people who speak feels dizzy, they tend to curl up in a, in, a, in a fetus to protect themselves. This position has also known to increase dizziness, so you're actually doing worse for yourself, even though you feel like you're protecting yourself. So we're going to do 
don't get you lying on the bed. Okay? This is all you. Okay? This is purely an, an active therapy where you need to commit to these exercises. Okay? And you have to do this two to three times a day. That's how many times you have to do to try to stimulate your brain and your balance system so that you can get out of the vicious cycle. So I, I say that only the people who's really committed are successful. If you don't do the exercises and you come see me once a week, nothing's going to change. you got to do it over. Okay? So if you're not committed, it might not be for you. But if you're ready, then we welcome you. Okay? So once you've done the exercises and you come see me weekly, a lot of people do see really great results in six to eight weeks where they slowly make the exercises harder and harder and harder every week, given that you do the exercises. So I believe it is worth it. All right, so last thing, you've been sitting for a long time. I don't know how long it's been, but we're going to stand up, okay? I'm gonna introduce you to some exercises that you can do on your own, and if you like, I can give you some printed exercises. Are you tilting? Okay, 
decided not to do anything. Right? Okay? Which is, which is for safety. Okay? You're trying to protect your body. That is fine. However, I want you to start doing that movement. And I don't mind you holding on and you start doing that movement again. Yeah. Okay. So right now, the, some movements that you might be feeling, making you feel dizzy or you feel uncomfortable about your balance. Okay? Yes, we're not going to go straight to that activity, but we're going to modify it in some sort of way so that we can get there. And this is exactly it. Okay? This is what we do with physio. Okay? If this exercise is too much, we're going to find a way. We're going to find a way to do it so that eventually you learn to let go of your hands. <laughs> Thank you. 
question to you is, are you ready to feel better? Because okay? again, as I said earlier, we need commitment to make sure that this works. Okay? So if you are, if you're interested in uh, talking to us more, we do provide complimentary initial consults uh, where we listen to your stories in a little more detail and we can discuss about 